Okay, cryptic crosswords, different from quick crosswords, with which some of you might be more familiar. I'm going to tell you why they're so good. I'm going to tell you how to do them. And if you already do them, I'm going to say, well done, carry on. So if you can now all please raise your hands if you like doing cryptic crosswords. I can't see anything. Not very many. Okay, thank you. Hands down. Now please raise your hands once you spot your favorite newspaper or magazine on the screen. Okay, most of you, a few more of you. Now that's interesting because although all of these publications include a cryptic crossword in almost every edition, it means that many of you will buy the newspaper or magazine and simply ignore the crossword. Is that because you hate cryptic crosswords? Is it because you're stupid? You don't look stupid. I think that the reason in dramatic pauses is <laughs> that you simply don't know how to tackle them. This is, thank you. Now, this is understandable because the, reason, the, the rules for doing crypto crosswords aren't published alongside the crossword. Anyway, you have to know someone who knows how to do them and learn from them. For example, I learned from my parents. They were I was a happy family. I don't remember my dad looking so camp. <laughs> my dad. Uh, so I've spent about eight years learning how to do them from them. And over the years, I've enjoyed them and I've learned many interesting things. The number one reason for doing crypto crosswords is you learn lots of interesting facts, like things about history, about geography, about culture. The second good reason for doing cryptic crosswords is that it's good for your memory. I research memory for a living, and I can tell you that doing cryptic crosswords will make you use rarely used connections between words and meanings in your brain, and thereby strengthening them, thereby giving you a healthier memory. A third good reason for doing cryptic crosswords is that it also helps you form new connections between words and meanings in the brain, and this is the basis of metaphor, of analogy, of poetry, and of creative writing. And the fourth great reason for doing cryptic crosswords is that although you might think of the typical type of person who likes to solve a crossword to be of a typical age, maybe, who frequents a particular type of bench, <laughs> actually, they're great social activities. I always do them with friends, family, with my girlfriend, with tea and with beer. So there are some great reasons for doing the cryptic crossword. How do you actually tackle the buggers? Well, the standard cryptic clue uh, includes two main parts. The first of those is called the definition. This is a straight synonym of the answer. This is what you find in a quick crossword. So the first thing to do is to look at the number of letters in the answer, six, and look for a word or two words, which is either at the beginning or the end, it's never in the middle, which might uh, be the definition. So for example, turn, perhaps turn rock, edges, or maybe intersection of edges. That's a corner. Okay, we have a candidate definition. Now we have to cross-check it using the cryptic bits. These are words which tell you to uh, do certain actions with bits of the clue, take words or letters and build up the answer. For example, if you were to see the word, I don't know, Germany in a clue, this might mean put a G somewhere in the answer. If you were to see the word rock endlessly, this might mean take the word rock, take the end off it, turn rock endlessly, turn it around. Northeast is commonly abbreviated by N-E and L left and right in cryptic crosses tend to be L and R. So there we have it. We've made up the answer <laughs> in bits. <laughs> We've cross-checked it. We're going to write it in the, the crosser. Now I'm going to tell you about three more examples of cryptic clue. The first is a hidden in the clue type of clue. This is where you'll have a, a word like part of, which means the answer is hidden in part of the clue. Skill here is the definition. We're looking for a six-letter word within that phrase, vital entertainment. Sometimes they just pop out at you. Any guesses? Talent. Talent. Well done. And we're all hoping that this young man's talent doesn't stay <laughs> hidden for too much longer. I thank you. <laughs> The second type of clue I want to tell you about is a split word clue. This is where it'll tell you to take a word and split it and put it around another word. For example, at the end of this clue, we're going to take the word her and put it around a word for a bird. For example, if you put her around this bird here, you'll get a big mistake or a howler, like Rob Green's absolute heartbreaking howler against the USA. The third type of clue I'm going to tell you about is the anagram clue. This is where you have a word like mess, which means anagram this, and you have some letters to anagram. And you can rearrange the letters in did, refrain, no, to get an English defender. I like to spread the letters on the page. I hear Rio Ferdinand. And if you haven't spotted Rio Ferdinand yet, don't worry, that's because this bastard Emil Heskey injured him before the tournament began. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's be quick. So I hope I've, give, I've given you some tools with which to tackle cryptic crosswords. If you're a beginner, you might stare at grids until you feel sick. <laughs> I advise patience. Don't burn out over an impossible puzzle. Do something different, go and watch a match, come back with a fresh head, and I think you'll improve. I hope I've convinced you that cryptic crosswords are fun, doable, and beneficial, and if you want to do one with me, I'll be at the bar later. Thanks very much. <laughs>